Hello. Hi, Hi guys. Hi. Um, welcome to our third webinar. Yes. Yes. Th our we third did the first live and webinar. One. Um, we have a special guest for you guys. Hi. Her name is Bianca Hillier. She's a balayage specialist at the uh, Sally Hirschberger Salon in LA. Hello. You've also seen her in many of our app videos. She does our on scalp app video as well as our um, base and gloss app video as well. Yes. Um, so we are going to address a bunch of balayage questions today. And she's, she's kind of a big deal. Yes, we want to show a little bit of her work here. This is an amazing um, platinum on Asian hair. You all know that Asians have very, very dark hair. So, you know, how, how this particular picture, Bianca, how were you able to get her so light? So I took her from going dark to light by using an on the scalp bleach and I put it in foils back to back to back all throughout the entire head, working my way from the nape up and then from side to side. So I let it process. I used Olaplex in it. Um, what were your measurements? So I used, I used seven stage, Clairol seven stage. So I used that and then I used an, a quarter of an ounce of Olaplex just for my entire mixture for on the scalp. And then for the ends, I used the same thing. And How I used, much bleach uh, product do you use? About one ounce per mixture. Okay, and then you put everything in what, slices? Yeah, I slice it, I use a foil, and I foil my way all the way from nape up, side to side. And why do you prefer putting them in uh, foil slices rather than just applying bleach straight onto the hair? Um, I prefer to do that because the foil conducts heat which allows the chemical to act faster. Even though you're bumping up the developer with Olaplex and stuff, I still think that it needs a little bit more of a push, right? It's really important when you are taking these clients with extremely dark hair um, in, to put it in foils because when you just put bleach straight onto the hair, it's, it tends to dry out and it's exactly. a little harsher on the hair, isn't it? Totally. You can kind the of foil sometimes... foil keeps it moist. Yes, the, you keep the foils moist, you have like slivers and they get, get much lighter. And you can also kind of like use a bit of a lower de volume of developer because you can, you know, put it's them... penetrating through the hair a little bit more. Yes, nice. Plus with foils, I mean, you have heat conduction, which is going to be entirely different than, you know, just balayaging or doing your, you know, global bleach application or anything like that. Like you said, though, keeping it moist is really important, and same with that heat conduction, that really gives you, you know, kind of like an even, consistent result. And then after you pull out the foils, do you go back and apply it directly on scalp? I actually didn't need to for this in particular case, but sometimes, yes, if, if it's needed, I definitely will. But before Olaplex, I would never do that because obviously it would damage the hair way too much and it would create too much breakage and um, really, like, disintegrate the inside of the hair. So. With Olaplex, I've definitely done that before, done a double bleach, but for this in particular case, I haven't. Okay, nice. And um, we'll show you other pictures. Rocky Barnes is one of her um, clients. She is very well known for her hair color. I get a ton of people requesting for Rocky Barnes um, <laughs> highlights. And this was done how? So with Rocky, I've been slowly taking her from dark to light, obviously, by using balayage highlights. So what I do with her is I use L'Oreal Infini, which is a, it could be on the scalp bleach as well, but I don't, I use it for her balayage. And so I'll use that. I, my, my mixture is that I like to do about 10 to 15 grams of Infini, the bleach. And then depending on, you know, the amount of thickness or runniness that I would like it, the consistency, I'll use generally 10 grams of Infini and about 30 grams of developer. And the developer varies in um, strength depending on whatever it is, the circumstance that I'm doing. And then for 10 grams of Infini, I'll use about 2 grams of Olaplex number 1 into my mixture. And on that, you just mentioned specifically taking it slowly. Can you explain to people why it is important, even with Olaplex, to take it slowly? Um, I mean, I've been working on her for a couple of years now, so I've been taking it in phases because even though you're using Olaplex, you're still um, breaking bonds in the hair. So it's never, I never suggest on blasting up the hair from like dark black or dark brown or any dark color to a platinum or a blonde right away due to the fact that you are breaking the bonds no matter how much Olaplex you're using, it's still in chemicals and stuff like that. So what would you say her natural is? 
probably a level one or two, like a two and a half. So very, very dark. Super. She's Asian. She's a little mixed, but she's Asian. She has super dark hair, and it's fine. <laughs> It's fine. It's hard to put bleach on, you know, really dark hair to get people this blonde. I mean, she's really light on her ends. And that's what people are asking for these days. I'm sure you guys are all getting all these clients where they have dark hair and they want to be so bright on their ends. And they think they could do this in one sitting. And realistically, how many, how long did it take I've been you to doing get? her for a few years now, so it's been a while. But I also put her balayage in a foil. And how do you do that? So... I'll literally. Okay. We're gonna show you guys. We love um, balayage in a foil because when you balayage, balayage is actually um, freehand painting. If you guys mm -hmm. are just doing balayage for the first time, and you know you have two types of of highlighting, you can either weave and apply into a foil and like kind of have pockets in the head, or you can you know use a brush with the bleach and literally paint it on the hair. So balayage is free painting. So I'll literally, I'll get, you know, whatever section it is that I'm doing, and I will literally paint directly onto the hair. I'll get like a little paddle that I have. So I'll paint onto the paddle because I want those tips to be nice and bright and light. And I really want it to penetrate through. So I'll oversaturate the tips. And then underneath my my paddle, I'll grab the foil. I paint down onto it. I'll, I'll assist. Okay, yeah. here we go. Thanks, Jordan. Hold on. And then I'll Hold literally on. paint onto it, get this super um, saturated with my Olaplex and the bleach. And then I'll go ahead, fold it up, go like this, fold the corner, and then I let it just sit and process. We'll just, we'll just leave that in there. Yes, I'm Love looking good. It. I feel so pretty already. <laughs> yeah. So I'll let it penetrate through. I let it sit, and then I do heat on top of it as well. Depend. It varies every situation. I'll take this out. Uh, it varies every situation that I'm doing, but I definitely <coughs> do use heat, even though I'm using Olaplex. It's I haven't had a problem with it. Um, and how do you so use far. heat? So. For me, when I'm doing this, I'll put a bag on top to enclose it so that the bleach doesn't dry out. Even though it's in a foil, there's still cracks in it and stuff, so, you know, oxygen can get in and yes. really dry it out. And I want it to stay moist, especially to get those tips really dense and blonde. So what I'll do is I'll put a bag on top of it after, mm -hmm. clip it so it's all secure and whatever. And then uh, I'll go in with a diffuser on my blow dryer and I'll hand, me or my assistant will hand heat up each individual highlight around the head or if I just want the roots or the tips or whatever it is that I'm doing. Yes. Um, that's and what what's, do. what's great about a diffuser, using heat with a diffuser, is that you can literally pick up each um, kind of foil pocket and you can diffuse that piece. So you can really direct the heat exactly where you want it um, to go, which is really great, especially if they want all those bright pieces around their face. Totally. Because dark haired clients, they don't always want all these highlights on their root. They kind of, you know, the reason you do balayage is why. So that it's subtle and so that the grow out is a lot more natural, a lot less harsh of a line. Um, it's just a lot lower maintenance. Yes, you can, how many, how often do you usually highlight your... So, for instance, that one, Rocky, um, she's super frequent about coming in on time. She's very, she's a great client. She's super punctual. But I highlight her probably three to four times a year at the most. But she's very frequent about coming in for toners. And so I'll also use Olaplex in her toners because I know that I'm going to continue to take her lighter. Even though if I'm not necessarily taking her lighter today, she has tons of heat and thermal styling when she's on set and doing all this stuff. So I want to make sure that definitely I'm using Olaplex to um, repair her hair in between highlighting services. Okay. That's one thing too we want to hit on. Um, when you are doing, you know, a double process but multiple highlights in the same day, mm -hmm. are you using number, number two in between each? Oh yeah, definitely. Because um, even though I'll use uh, number one into the color, or bleach or whatever it is that I'm doing. Um, but I know that I'm gonna re-highlight her because you know it just didn't get light enough or for whatever reason. I definitely will use number two at the shampoo bowl in between. So we'll rinse out, uh, say it's a highlight, we'll rinse out her highlights, go ahead, um, put number two on. I'm not gonna be toning because I'm gonna be lifting her again. So I'll put number two on. I let it sit for a minimum of 10 minutes, but there's been times where I'm definitely like, oh, this needs to sit on a little bit longer before I start again. <laughs> yes. So um, I just good. It. It's just important. I mean, you do have to tell your clients like, I wouldn't be able to do this if I didn't have. Oh, totally. Flex. And they've been you fine need with to it. sit with this treatment on. We need to rebuild your hair before we go and lighten it again. Definitely. That's. I mean, that's the most important thing. Like using number two in between. It's about maintaining the integrity of the client's hair. Yeah, it's definitely going to be some added time in there. But the point of using number two after that first highlight and prior to the second 
is you're going to repair bonds that were broken during that first highlight application. And by doing so, you actually strengthen it before that second application because exactly. yes. you are having to go back in there and break those bonds again. So it's highly important to use this in between on, you know, your double process, double highlights. Definitely. Um, let's go over your mixture again. Um, I know with balayage, sometimes you don't have to mix a lot of product. Mm -hmm. What is like, you know, just a little amount that you usually So mix? my smallest amount that I do, which is easy to like go by because I go in increments of five grams of bleach. So I use Infini, which is L'Oreal Professional. So I'll use five grams of Infini. And then I use 15 grams of developer. I like my balayage very runny. A lot of people are like, whoa, so this one is to three. dripping. So yeah, about one to three. And then I'll put um, one gram of Olaplex One into my mixture after I've already stirred it. Because if you don't and you mix it in prior to stirring the developer and bleach, it's going to get a really weird... Um, it's going to be um, thinner. Yeah, it's right? a very thin consistency. Always, 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 no matter what you're mixing, whether it be color, high lift, bleach, always mix your product and your developer first mm -hmm. and then add your Olaplex in because you will have a different consistency if you just pour everything into the bowl at one time. Um, toners as well, if you use, you know, a lot of your liquid toners, always, totally. you know, you want to make that gel consistency first and then you add in your Olaplex. So let's show show everyone how much you use and so here you are. So um, I'll mix up my little five grams, say, with my 15 grams of developer. And then I literally will use about just under that much. Yeah. So a little bit goes a long way. Yeah, definitely. And you don't need to use more of that because it will slow down the process and it's going to take forever. And I have all these clients with tons of dark hair and they want to be blonde, of course. So if you're using too much of it, it's, it's not going to really result in how you want it to be. Yes. And with that being said, too, it's not just the fact that Olaplex would actually dilute. It's the fact that there's an actual chemistry going on behind this. The reason for the product slowdown is as these disulfide bonds are being broken and turned into single sulfur hydrogen bonds, Olaplex is working right behind that to cross-link those back together. That's the reason for the slowdown. It's just because something's actually going on with the hair. It's about maintaining the integrity of the hair. You know, and that's entirely different than, you know, a lot of the other things on the market right now. And what about volumes of developer? Um, when I balayage, I use different volumes depending on whatever it is that I'm trying to do. So often, I find myself using 40 volume, even when if it's in a foil or not, and I use heat or not. I often use 40 volume, um, but you know, that's based on your clientele and exactly what it is that you're trying to achieve, because there's been times where I've used 20 volume or 30 volume, um, when you want something a lot more subtle, a lot less bright, a lot less blonde. Sun kiss. Yes. Yeah. Very sun Golden. Yeah. So um, it all depends and it all varies, but I definitely have used 40. Um, and yeah. Um, and another thing that I do want to bring up is that after you do mix your product and your developer together, add in your Olaplex, mix that again. And a lot of balayage specialists like a certain consistency. Mm -hmm. Like she likes her bleach a little bit thinner than usual. After you add in your Olaplex, you can then add more bleach or more developer for your desired consistency. Because with painting, it's all about, you know, your, control. yes, it's all about control, it's all about the product, and it's all about your tools. Um, what are some like great tools that you love? I really like the, uh, to balayage with, I really like the Vidal Sassoon brush. I also like the- Framar, yeah. I love the Framar brushes. I love brushes. those brushes, especially when you're trying to do those sheer, um, sun-kissed highlights. I'm yes. obsessed with those right now. Yes, they're Just super soft, them. but they're also very, you know, controllable. Um, controlled, yes. With with balayage, it's kind of all about your brushes sometimes. Definitely. You have to get the right, you know, brush in order to get that like perfect stroke and like a soft stroke. Um, I have another picture here, which I love. She obviously has very curly hair and you took her <clears throat> light and it looks like she's naturally very dark. She's naturally probably about a level three, four. Nice. And she's, um, you know, she's ethnic. She has black in her. She um, has very fine curly hair. And of course she wants to be blonde. So I don't necessarily bump up my developer with her because I find that curly hair is a lot more fragile and it has tendency to break a lot more easier than you know, if it were to be straight, straight hair, hair, of course, hair, whatever. Yes. So I don't bump up developer with her, but her processing time does have to be adjusted when I use the Olaplex in it, which is every time now, compared to before when I wasn't using Olaplex. So she sits for 
with her balayage and I don't even sometimes I'll foil her sometimes I won't but I still will heat her up no matter what so now she sits instead of like five minutes she sits for ten minutes or so with the with mm -hmm. the, the bleach on her head. And how long do you give people heat? That is one big issue that I feel like a lot of people are running into mm -hmm. is that they give their client too much heat. Like an hour at a time. 20 <laughs> minutes is even very long, I feel uh, like. Definitely. So, once again, it depends on the developer and the strength of the product that is that you're using and the desired level of lift. But you can only take so much from the hair because yes. when you bleach, you're basically eating away and you're breaking all the bonds that are building the inside of your hair. And mm -hmm. so you can only take so much from it before it starts to break or disintegrates. So I tend to definitely use about 10 minutes of heat, yes. usually no more. I would definitely say check every five minutes if you yes. are using heat. That's my best advice. And cooling is yeah. super important. I mean, it's in a foil. It's keeping your, you know, little bleach pockets very warm. But also by cooling, you are, it's still lightening the hair. So it's really important to give your client, you know, some time cool to down. cool Definitely. as well. So when I do let them process, say it's 10 minutes with heat, or heating her up with the diffuser, letting it process, whatever, then I'll definitely have them sit about five minutes or so. You know, give or take, and then we go ahead and check it out. again. Exactly. Nice. And just, I mean, to really hit on that a bit more, if you're dealing with fine hair, fragile hair, curly hair, you know, a lot of the time you don't need to bump the developer because I think a lot of people, when they read over the FAQ, they actually just kind of miss over that fact. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know what? It's fragile. You need to be careful. Um, you know, this is this is insurance, and like I've said, and we've all said multiple times, just because you have car insurance does not mean you should drive your car over a cliff. So still be careful with Olaplex. You really need to kind of learn how it works before you push the limit. And the same goes for heat. You know, I see a lot of people that will leave clients under heat for extended periods of time and then, you know, they're like, oh, the hair broke. And it's like, well, the hair broke because it was pushed too far. You know, if you're using heat, you need to be very respectful of the actual products that you're using. Lightener is damaging to the hair. It is, lightener is not a conditioning treatment in any way whatsoever. And when you apply heat to that not conditioning treatment, you know, bad things can happen. So it's still about being careful. I mean, yeah. that is the biggest thing. You know, you need to know the rules of hairdressing before you just push things. And yeah, it's really important to know that if you put straight Olaplex number one onto the hair, you won't have any breakage. It's the bleach in the developer. So it is something that you have to know that is the cause of any kind of breakage. If you're pushing the hair too far, it's the bleach in the developer that you have to be very aware of. Definitely. How do you check, you know, how compromised the hair is when it's being lightened? So how I do it is, mm -hmm. um, say we have this foil hair that we just painted. So okay, we'll get a new one. Okay, Hold freshy. On. Yeah, yeah, we have a one. fresh one. Let's kind of get that folded oh, up yeah. for you. Nice. All right. Okay. So we painted it on. It's yeah. been sitting. We heated it up. It's folded now. It's closed. So we heated it up, now you've been processing for um, 10 minutes, say. Yeah. So yes. now I'm like, okay, she wants to be blonde. It's Feel blonde, blonde already. Enough. It's, it's still fairly orange, but you know, can we keep pushing it? Can I keep putting heat on? Does she need to cool down, whatever. So I will literally get the hair, and That's I will true. definitely wipe off some bleach, and I'll definitely like stretch it to see its elasticity. Pull it, pull on the ends. <laughs> see if it's <laughs> strong. If it starts to bounce back right away, it's, you're doing okay, but if it's starting to get a little stretchy and a gummy. little bit compromised, a little gummier feeling, that's yes. when you definitely want to cool it off and, and start rinsing it up. Rinsing, apply that number two on exactly. there. Um, that's one issue that I feel like a lot of, I see a lot on the forums is that people push the hair and they're like, the hair broke off. Well, really, I feel like people should have known exactly where the hair was while it was lightening. Exactly. You want to check the hair during the process. You can't just leave your client by themselves and just, you know, hope that their hair will still be on their head. I always check the ends. Open the foils all the way. Even all if the way. If you're the weaving, yes, because the ends of the hair have been living on the hair the longest. So definitely pull on that and see how strong that is. And jumping back <clears throat> for a minute, all of this starts with a proper consultation. Definitely. That is key because you know what you get these clients that come in and you really don't have any idea What's on their hair? You know they come in with this beautiful dark hair But a lot of the time that could possibly be box color and under that you have four different sets of highlights Maybe you know some henna in there and all types of fun things <laughs> so Little party it does, mix. 
You know, everything starts with that consultation, though. Everything starts, you know, by doing it right from the beginning and really, really talking to your clients, and especially those new clients. You know, so you're... There's still the possibility of surprises, but there's less of a chance if you actually talk to them. Definitely. Yes. A proper yes. consultation is always needed in order to even um, make your client happy. You need to know what she wants, what's been in her hair. And if you don't know what's in her hair, you definitely can't provide the proper service. Um, so let's talk about maybe any issues that you first had when mixing oh. with balayage. So when Olaplex. I first started using Olaplex, it was, I think before it was out to the public and everything, and you guys came to us and were like, here, we want your salon to try this out. We had taped labels <laughs> on the bottles that Dean had gave us. <laughs> they were made in a Word document, and it was pretty awesome. It was a like, terrible orange, like, brown <laughs> color. Um, and so they were like, here, use a half ounce of this and all your bleach and do this and that, whatever. So we started using it. So I was using way too much Olaplex 1 in my bleach, whether it was balayage on the scalp, whatever it was that I was doing, it was way too much. And so I was like, this is, this is crazy. This isn't working. Uh, I have a lot of uh, ethnic clients and stuff. So all of their hair was stuck at an orange phase. And I was like, this girl wants to be blonde. How am I going to do this? And so they were like bumped with the developer. I was like, no way, I'm not doing that. It's scary. It's scary. It is. And so finally, after a few times, I was like, you guys, I hate this stuff. I don't know why you're telling me to use this, whatever. So I started bumping up the developer, and then I was like, okay, well, it's starting to lift a little bit. And then we started getting more um, direction and instruction on actually how to use it through, you know, Tracy and Slim and Jordan and all of Trial us. Trial and error definitely. is everything. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And so then uh, they're like, okay, you need to start using less than half ounce or whatever it is that we were using. So yeah. slowly but surely we came out with uh, more formulations on how to actually mix it. But at first, I hated it. I was like, this is crazy. It's not lifting. Um, but you didn't throw it away. No, it's because the hair felt good. It, it felt, felt really good. silky. But I was like, you know what? <clears throat> if her hair's not getting the color I need it to be, like, I'm a colorist. I can't really use this. But yes. we started figuring out different formulas and stuff. And so now I'm obsessed with it. But at first, I had a really big problem mixing because I didn't want to bump up developer. And um, it just kept getting stuck in an orange face. Yeah. And that's something, too, that, you know, we really want to stress. Everything can be personalized with Olaplex. Mm -hmm. Every single thing you do. Some lighteners have five levels of lift. Others have nine plus. Some color is ammonia based. Some is non-ammonia based. Everything is about adjusting. All those directions that are in that FAQ were from us, trial and error and things like that. But beyond that, it's about finding what works for you personally, what works for your clientele. Definitely. It's like obviously Bianca had to do a lot trying to figure things out. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, just... Just work with it, kind of adjust, you know, use less. Any issues with lift or processing time or anything like that, or, um, you know, just use less. Find what works for you. Yes, we want you to use any bleach that you're using. If there was only one kind of bleach, then we would have one set of directions. But because it's compatible with every single bleach line out there, you can customize according to your own, you know, lift and processing time. So that's um, something Definitely. that, you know, it can be customized for you. Um, another question. Tips for people if learning they've never to done balayage, they love the look. It's definitely a control factor. You definitely have to learn how to control it. So brushes, like you're saying, utensils and tools that you're using are definitely a huge part of how to balayage. Um, Start on mannequin heads, right? <laughs> That's what I did. Practice well, I think on too, mannequin heads. It's, it's visual. It's mm -hmm. like you totally. need, you're seeing exactly how everything is laying when you're doing it, which, you know, kind of changes it a lot for people. Totally. Yes. And a good haircut really does make a big difference because, like you're saying, it's exactly where the layers are falling. So if I want this tip to be nice and bright, but she goes in and gets a haircut after... Oh, you cut all those tips Then you tips cut all off. my tips that I just worked on. Haircut, so, first, haircut first, everyone. Haircut first, and then get your color. Yes. Let's not cut all those bright... Beautiful Long balayage tips. pieces. Um, so, and then a little bit touching more on like fine, fragile hair. What are your tips? Um, with fine, fragile hair, just like I said, be careful. Check it every five minutes. Um, I do work with the, I work from the nape up. And when I formulate, I'll use something that's weaker on the bottom because that is going to be processing longer. By the time I'm done with the top, this has been sitting on for anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes, depending on how quick you are. And it's definitely been processing the entire time while you're still on this and it's um, barely been touched. And I think too, like a, something that people miss a lot of the time, if one section is done, 
just go rinse it. Yes. Because there, I've started to notice a lot of people will leave everything on yes. until every section is done. It's like, you know what? Yes. If you start applying in the nape, and let's say you are using the same developer, the nape is going to finish first. It's really first. warm back there. Too. So <laughs> it's like rinse out section it's out. by <laughs> section if it's necessary. You know, obviously not everyone can, you know, put in a partial highlight in let's just say like 10 minutes or working with assistants. So it's like, if it does take you longer, just do it section by section. It's so important to rinse it out when it's ready, not Extremely wait until it's good. overcooked. Exactly. Um, more questions. How has Olaplex changed your work in the salon? Oh, well, um, my ticket, my prices have definitely gone up, which is great. Of course. Um, my timing has, been, has, it's needed to be adjusted because it does take a little bit longer, even though you're bumping up developer and stuff. Um, so how I book my additional time yes, right here definitely so when I book clients I'm usually back to back about every 30 minutes or so the entire day So when I need to do an Olaplex treatment, which is going to take some time I can double book, but I need to keep that into consideration when I am booking in clients. So just be aware of that um, Olaplex has also allowed me to really like push the hair to the limits without compromising the integrity so I've been able to do things that I wasn't really able to do before, whether it's taking another session or not. Sometimes that hair just wouldn't have been able to do it before. Yeah. And yeah. two, I mean, while we're on that note um, of upcharging, it's like obviously cost per application is going to differ depending on where you are in the world. Mm -hmm. But the thing that does not differ, it doesn't matter if you're in the U.S., Australia, Canada, or the European Union. This is going to be on the hair a minimum of 10 minutes, and that's exactly what you're charging based on. You know, for stylists, time is money. That's 10 to 20 minutes that you're not booking another client. Yeah, you and can do a base in that time. It's very, very important to charge based on that. Your clients are going to walk out with beautiful, healthy hair, but at the same time, too, this gives you an opportunity, you know, to really value your time. Yeah, definitely. And um, have you gotten a bunch of new clients from all the packs? I've actually gotten a ton of new clients from, like, Instagram, Yelp, um, Bianca a bunch Colors of, on Instagram. Yes. A bunch of clients have written about on Yelp or on like Olaplex uh, forums on Facebook or whatever it's been that I use Olaplex and I, I tag it in all my photos and stuff. So I definitely have gotten a bunch of clients who are like, hey, you know, they'll email me and be like, I heard that you use this Olaplex stuff. I don't know exactly what it is, but I know I want you to use it on my hair because my friend had it and her hair is like silk or whatever. What? So I've definitely got, yeah. So I've definitely gotten a lot of new clients from that, which is great um, because everyone really should be using Olaplex, whether you're a stylist, a colorist, an assistant, whoever it is that you are. Definitely. You should definitely be using it because every client, every person getting their hair done is a, com like, is a candidate to use Olaplex on. Whether your hair is healthy or damaged or not, it's never going to be a negative effect on your hair. So yes. I've definitely gotten a lot of clients from Olaplex. So hashtag all your work. Definitely. Olaplex. Everyone healthy. wants to see your work, so hashtag it. Healthy is about maintaining the health of the hair. It's never letting it get to a compromise point in the first place. Obviously, the results are going to be more, more dramatic on hair that's compromised. Mm -hmm. But you have totally different goals in mind. You know, for someone with healthy hair, just keep it healthy. Keep it well, beautiful. What I've noticed with people with healthy hair, like for instance, I don't bleach my hair, I just color my hair. I use a 10 volume, I use an ammonia free color. You're naturally like an 8? I'm naturally seven. like a 6-7. Six, 6-7. Seven. Six, seven. Six, seven. And I go darker obviously. So for me, my problem before was, for some reason, I don't wash my hair very often, but <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> but you my don't hair do, really. My hair would fade. <laughs> My hair, I'm hot now. Uh, my hair would fade super orange to the point where Slim would be like, Bianca, I'm like, you're your color your hair. Done, girl. And so now that I've been using Olaplex in my base, I use just an eighth of an ounce. Um, but I'll also put it as a treatment or in my toner. So I'll put it in my base. And then if I'm going <clears> to <throat> use it as a treatment, I'll shampoo it out. And then I'll put the Olaplex water treatment on my hair. I let it sit for 10 minutes. And I find before I tone and then I'll tone and then I rinse it out. Um, but I find that now my toner lasts so much longer, my hair doesn't fade, it's not so warm when it does fade. It does fade, but it's not anything like before for sure. And so I does find it fade that, as quickly. No, it lasts so much longer. So usually like with one wash, I'm like, I washed it once. Why is my toner why is my hair red? Right. Or orange. It's like a brick color. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's the worst. And so um I find that it lasts a lot longer. Uh usually in between appointments I don't really have a problem. In between my base my roots, I don't really have to tone in between anymore, which is good. Nice. 
Um, more questions. Oh, add your salon to our salon locator yes. Yes. on www.olaplex.com. Um, people want to know who you are and they want to know where your salon is because you are an Olaplex salon. So definitely add yourself to our salon locator um, to generate new clients. Definitely. Really, new really clients. important. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the number three. Mm. Dun, 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 dun. The number three is Sweet sound amazing, <laughs> right? How do you talk to your clients about the number three? So I tell my clients that it's a three-part system. Yes. So they don't really have a choice to not use the number three. I tell any client that is going lighter that they have to finish the entire bottle by the next time that I see them. Good. And at first, Give them a kind of, yeah. At first, they were kind of like, well, you know, I don't know if I want to spend the money, this and that, whatever. But I include it as a three-part system. So when I'm charging the salon, I it's not an option to buy this separately. It's a whole, it's a three-step thing for me. And so this way, they're forced into using this in-between services because when you do a client in the salon and you're charging them for this Olaplex treatment, they're gonna go home, whether they're blonde or not, they're gonna go home, flat iron their hair, curl their hair, whatever it is that they're doing, and they're gonna be breaking their hair. And then they're gonna be like, well, you know, you're charging me for this new treatment, I don't understand why my hair's still breaking. Well, because you're flat ironing every day. Of course yes. it's gonna break. So, for those clients, and for other clients as well, I make them use this once a week. I tell them that I want them to put, uh, go in the shower, rinse their hair, use it on their damp hair, um, a minimum of 10 minutes. But I tell them if they're gonna like go to sleep or they're gonna go to the gym or whatever, use it and leave it, let it sit in as long as possible. Since there's no proteins and parabens and sulfates, it can sit on the hair as long as possible without damaging the hair. Yes, so I have them do that once a week. And I've noticed that the people who were fussing about paying for it or just having to do a whole service at home, they can leave it in their hair and even let it dry into their hair. And these people have come back and been like, that stuff amazing. is amazing. I want to continue using it. So I haven't had a problem after the first, you know, time or two. Introduction. Yeah. yeah. It is a new treatment to put on. Usually treatments you use after you shampoo in the shower for like five minutes. But Olaplex is completely different. It works on the inside mm -hmm. all the way out. Um, so when I tell people to use the number three, I tell them if they have a lot of product buildup, Yes, give their hair like a light shampoo mm -hmm. and towel dry the hair really well. You don't want to dilute anything further, so get as much um, moisture out of the hair as possible. Mm -hmm. And then I tell them, you know, put a little bit in your hand and then put it on all your ends first. Not a little bit, a generous amount. Well, Use first, more than you would a conditioner though. First put a little bit on your ends and then comb it through. Get a brush or a comb and comb it through. And I then apply more. Put more, put it on, on the hairline. Your hairline is so much more fragile than the rest of your hair. So focus on the ends and the hairline first and really target those areas. And comb it through, keep combing it through and apply more until you feel like your hair is very, very saturated. Speaking of hairlines though, I'm just gonna hop back to highlights really quick. Another thing people don't realize, if you're highlighting around the front hairline, those are generally the first foils pulled. And a lot of people end up leaving those on for longer periods of time. So, you know, start paying attention to that as well. When you are dealing with fragile hair, I know this is a whole side side thing, but definitely pull those foils first, you know, stop. Yes, yes. working with Tracy, that is the first foils that we check because they are so fine and you do such a fine weave around the hairline that you should actually pull them before anything else is ready. So we'll actually, you know, have a, a little pH fix to kind of um, stop things from processing mm -hmm. and we'll pull it and we'll kind of wipe the bleach off to ensure that none of those hairline pieces um, break off. Going back to the number three, um, I know Bianca likes to do it as kind of a whole system. The other option you have as well, let's say you have a client that comes in with super compromised, super damaged hair and let's say they don't have time to do a full Olaplex Insulon treatment, you can send them home with just the number three to have Definitely. them start working on it at home. Number one, number two, and number three all share the same active ingredient that's gonna cross-link broken disulfide bonds. So number three can be used on its own. Number one and number two do not have to be used first. However, it's highly recommended. Yes. But um, just to give everyone another option there, because I know a lot of you were kind of asking like, can I use number three without number one and number two? You can? Yes. We were just definitely. in Canada and um, we were telling everyone that you definitely can use number three. And like he's saying, I've had clients come to me with like 
little chicken littles like fried, <laughs> like fried off and they're like, but I want to stay platinum. And I'm like, well, you know, we can't really bleach you yet. Even though we have, they're like, well, you use this Olaplex stuff. I, I read all about it. I read all about you. I know you use the Olaplex, so I should be able to stay blonde. And I'm like, well, I definitely can't bleach you. You have like fried little bits all over your head. Oh, chicken littles. Chicken littles, yeah. <laughs> and so um, I'll do the treatment on them in the salon and then I tell them that they need to do the number three on their own at home. And then, you know, we can revisit the situation and go from there. And I've definitely seen big improvements, but just because they're using this doesn't mean that the next session that I see them or the next appointment they make that I can go ahead and lighten them. I've definitely had to turn down a couple of people a few times and been like, no, you have to keep using this. I'm seeing like, you know, a big difference. Your hair was like hay when it was dry and then when it was yes. wet, it was like mush, like that yes. bubble gum dissolving, mm -hmm. you know? And what's a great way to introduce them to the number three is during their consultation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your client will come in just for a consultation and you'll take a look at their hair and you should begin them with the number three right then and there. Definitely. They don't need to have color on their hair. They don't need to use the number one or number two. They can prep the hair with the number three so that when they do come to you for their service, their hair is nice and strong. Definitely. You want to rebuild the bonds in their hair before you break them and lighten them. So definitely, 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 even if they haven't used the one and two, they could use the number three definitely. on their hair. And um, a big question is what's the difference between the number one, I mean the number two, and the number three? The number two is for professional use. This is what sits in your back bar, in your back room, and this is what you use on your clients. The number three is the client's retail. Similar treatments, they will all three relink the broken bonds in the hair. The number three is what you give them for, for them to use at home to maintain their hair at home. Definitely. And this is slightly diluted too. That's the other difference. Um, yes. Number two is actually stronger because it's an in salon strength. treatment. It's a professional strengthening service that you're going to be using in the salon. Number three is slightly diluted, so there is a difference in what they are doing at home. So it's important to use both. Yes. Totally. And that also goes for the in salon treatment. Um, the in salon treatment is a little bit more expensive than, you know, retailing the number three because you are using, you know, half an ounce or more of the number one in an applicator bottle, and then you are following with the number two on top of that. So it is, it is a stronger treatment as well, um, and it should be you know, priced and sold as such. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so let's dive I do the into Olaplex options. treatment on almost all of my clients, and they've all noticed their toners lasting so much longer. And like when you have those platinum girls, definitely their hair is more porous than like mine. And so they, and they want it to be white or silver or whatever. And so usually after what, like one or two washes, it's a little bit yellower again. And so they've been noticing a lot. They're like, did you change my formula? I'm like, no, like why, what's going on? They're like, well, you know, it's lasting really icy a lot longer. And I'm like, oh, well, it's probably because you're using the three at home and we keep doing the Olaplex treatment. So they've been in heaven. Um, with that being said too, um, you know, Olaplex is cross-linking broken disulfide bonds. You still need to retail your favorite moisture treatments, your favorite protein treatments. You know, this is just meant to add to. It's not meant to take any the place of anything at all. Well, and this is also the inside of the hair, whereas the... Uh, it works on like the inside conditioners, out. the outside of the hair yep. only. Yes. The cosmetic it's, effect. It yeah. still targets the external shaft of the hair, but you still want to... Um, apply something that will coat the hair. Mm -hmm. Olaplex won't coat the hair with anything because you always want to cleanse the hair. So you always do want to use a treatment, a moisturizing treatment, all of that, because that will coat the hair to temporarily leave it very, very silky feeling mm -hmm. and soft, right? Is Olaplex tested on animals? No, Olaplex is not tested on animals at all, ever. Um, I actually got asked if uh, someone could use Olaplex on their Yorkshire Terrier. And our response is we do not condone animal testing, so please do not use this on your pets. Awesome. Um, the other thing too, Olaplex is a single active ingredient. That's it. It does not contain formaldehyde, aldehydes, oils, DEA, sulfates, or anything like that. Um, it's just one single active ingredient. Obviously number two and number three have additives to make it a cream form, but everything is based off of that single active ingredient. So, um... <clears throat> um. Let's see, some questions. Um, if you don't use enough, will it even work slash make a difference? If you don't use enough, number one? Into your, yes. Um, 
I definitely use, I mean, it's all personal preference, really. So I would say, yeah, it still makes a difference. There's been times where I'll use, like I said, one gram in my amount. And there's times where I'll use, you know, the entire, I'll do the treatment. So I think it's always making a difference. But the more you use, the more benefit you will receive. Yes, I okay. feel like with treatments, the more frequently you use the treatments, the better it is for totally. the hair. Um, but as far as mixing, sometimes, you know, you do need to use less and it'll still go a long way. Mm -hmm. Oh, and another thing, use a non-spraying applicator bottle. Yes. Please, please, please. Um, you don't want anything spraying into the, to the air. You don't want anything, you know, getting in contact with your client's eyes or into their mouth. Mm -hmm. This is the directions that we have made. Um, always use a non-spraying applicator or bottle. Um, and that in just ensures it exactly where the treatment is going. So always have them lie back and apply it to their hair because it is direct. Just like, oh, there's something in here. <laughs> there's a little treatment in here already. <laughs> Let's wipe that off. <laughs> it's okay, it's a little old flex. <laughs> um, Lauren Zabik says, why is there not a set ratio of Olaplex to bleach? Um, like a one to six ratio, ratio or well, such. Everything can be adjusted. You have different yeah. strengths of lightener. I mean, it's and you're working with different developers. So if we had a set ratio, then you'd kind of get stuck in a sense because everything does need to be changed based on personal preference. Yes. Some we, lighteners are stronger. Some lighteners are weaker. Um, some are what, like three levels of lift? Some are nine levels of lift. So if you're using something that's three levels of lift and you're using the same amount of Olaplex 1 as you would in something with, uh, say, nine levels of lift, then, you know, your results will be different. Yes, definitely. Um, how do you um, what do you charge for in-salon treatments? Um, we actually recommend charging the same as your most expensive in-salon deep conditioning treatment or anything like that. Obviously, everything is going to change depending on clientele, location, service prices, and things like that. Mm -hmm. What you have to think about again, though, it's not the actual product cost that you're charging on. That's additional time. So you need to charge whatever is going to be comfortable for um, you and your salon. Let's talk a little bit about the whole shampooing, um, mm -hmm. toning, bleaching. What do you like to do? So what I like to do is I do the Olaplex treatment on every single client. So what I'll do is I'll put, say, um, I'm highlighting you. So I'll put the Olaplex one in your balayage mixture. I'll highlight yes. you, heat you up, we rinse you up. Since I'm going to do the Ola water, I will shampoo you. Also because I, I feel a little safer that way because what if my assistant for some reason forgot like a bit down here or somewhere in the hair or wherever and it wherever, keeps and it, keep, it continues to process then um, you're kind of screwed. Yes. So even though there's Olaplex in there, you know, that's now sitting on say, I don't know, 10 minutes longer than what you thought it would be. Yes. And it's so, a different lift. Exactly. Or deposit. And so what I'll do is I'll shampoo out the highlights or bleach or whatever is the color and then I'll do the Olaplex water. And then I let that sit on, and I tone directly on top of the Olaplex water. Yes, and you can do that because you are mixing Olaplex with water, so there isn't any kind of barrier um, as there would be with, with the, the number, number two. two. So you can definitely, definitely, I like to have them at the back bar. I'll make a few bottles of mm -hmm. the Olaplex water, or I'll just make one full bottle and I'll use it on a few clients. And after rinsing out um, the bleach out of the hair, towel dry really well, apply it, and then, you know, formulate, come back, and that five minutes that it took you to formulate and come back is a great amount of time for that Olaplex water to start. And then it's still going to be sitting on your hair and still processing the Olaplex water, still repairing yes. while you're toning. So, you know, my toner is anywhere from a minute to ten minutes, depending on whatever I'm doing. So that's still additional time that you're repairing the hair, which I like. That's why I like to do it. So then I'll rinse out the toner, and then directly on top of the rinsed out hair, I'll put the number two on. Then I let that sit sometimes 20 minutes, sometimes 30 minutes. Depends how damaged the hair is really. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll make them go home and be like, go home with this. Don't dry yeah. your hair. Let it sit. Wash it out when you get home. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so then I'll put the, the Ola 2 on and say it's 10 minutes minimum. Then I'll go ahead, shampoo, condition that out, and then finish up my client. Yes. So it really, it depends on how you want to, you know, do each service. But we always recommend to shampoo and condition out the number two. Definitely. If you want to shampoo after your bleach, after your toner, you can totally do that. We just didn't want to include in our instructions, oh, you have to shampoo like 17 times during your service. 
No, just always make sure to shampoo after the number two. And if you feel more comfortable with shampooing your bleach out, you can totally do so. Uh, I have one here from Marcella B. I am using the Olaplex as a treatment currently and I'm wondering, after I apply number two and leave it on for 10 minutes, should I rinse then use number three or just shampoo and condition after number two and save number three for a different day? So, the number two and the number three, like we said, is the salon use and your client use. Now, if you're a hairdresser, you obviously have both of them, but really use the number two and then shampoo and condition that out. The number three is packaged for your client in these cute little bottles. They're TSA friendly. Um, you can take them anywhere. I honestly like leave it in my purse and take it wherever <laughs> I go. <laughs> We're in Canada. She's like, guys, I got some. I'm like, have you tried this number three? Yeah. Um, but this is for your client's retail, so don't use it in the salon. Um, definitely just use the number th the number two in the salon, shampoo and condition this out, and save this for your client um, to use as retail. Um, so I use a powder bleach. I have, I'm not super fond on using a clay, mm -hmm. but it's personal preference, so it depends what I'm doing. I will use a clay when I'm trying to do something a little more subtle, yes. opposed to so much of a lift. So it depends what I'm trying to do, but I'm not opposed to either one, and I do use Olaplex. Like I said, I use Olaplex in all of my color. I literally use it on every single client. So not because I'm using a clay or a powder am I going to use um, Olaplex or not. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, here we go. Uh, Lauren Zabek, having a hard time getting the hair to lift, lighten up with 40 volume and Olaplex during balayage. You've had this experience so, before. So, um... I would say, depending obviously on your mixture and everything, just try using less Olaplex 1. Let it sit on a little bit longer. I know um, you're already using 40 volume, so I wouldn't necessarily suggest using anything stronger, for obvious reasons. But um, try using less Olaplex 1 and go from there. Yes. And you can, and you can heat way. it up as well. And then, if you're still having a problem, the foil conducts heat. So I know a lot of people don't use balayage in a foil. But it really, really, really like bumps it up and it pushes it to the next level. So that's why I use it a lot of the time. Um, how do you know when you want to use plastic saran wrap versus a foil? Um, it's also personal preference. Um, I say I have a lot more control with the foil. And say um, saran wrap, I'm not going to necessarily be wrapping around each highlight. It's around a section more, yes. more or less, right? It's to, you know, close everything off so the bleach isn't sitting on top of so, each other, right? Exactly. It's like more of a barrier um, a guard so that yes. the next layer doesn't touch onto the wet chemicals. And to keep it a bit moist, but you don't want that much lift. Exactly. Right? And so the foil for me is when I really want it to actually penetrate through like the tip or the actual streak in the highlight or whatever it is that I'm trying to do. I find that the foil does give me more <coughs> control over each individual highlight. So that's why I prefer to use a foil opposed to Saran Wrap. Nice. I have another one mm -hmm. from Maine Co. I think this one will have Slim Do. What's the proper way to use Olaplex with relaxers? Mm -hmm. Can you add it to the relaxer or is it only the conditioning treatment, number one with water, that you use after neutralizing? I'll start first off. Olaplex is not a conditioning treatment. Mm -mm. Yes. So <laughs> initially, our directions for the relaxers were to use a, um, a treatment after you neutralize. But now we have found that relaxers are cleaving the bonds in the hair. So it works a little bit similar to bleach. So we actually found that you can add Olaplex number one directly into your relaxer solution. So for every two ounces of relaxer, you can use an eighth, I mean, I'm sorry, a quarter of Olaplex number one. So basically you get two ounces of relaxer and you can use an, a quarter. Mix that directly into your relaxer and apply that as normal. And the whole rule with adding too much is the same. If you add too much, you might not get the same processing time or the same straightening effect. So start with a little bit and work your way up, and then you'll find your own sweet spot then. Obviously, so, too, you're going to use less when you're working with a mild relaxer. So yes. same with everything else. Definitely. Just adjust. Yes, you have different strengths of relaxer solutions, so the same thing. You also need to adjust accordingly. Apply that as normal, process, and you know, work the hair as normal, and then rinse the hair. Towel dry really well. At this point, the cuticle is just blown open, so you want to then use 
half an ounce of the number one with three ounces of water in a non-spraying applicator bottle. And you're going to apply the standalone Olaplex treatment. You can make the treatment a little stronger by adding more Olaplex to water, but really you never want to put straight Olaplex number one onto the hair because the hair will only take what it needs and we really don't want you to waste products so that's why we tell you dilute it with water. Um, apply that to the hair, leave that on for five minutes and then after five minutes you can just wring out any excess, apply the number two, roots to ends, comb that through, be very gentle with the hair of course, use a large tooth comb and let that sit for a minimum 10 minutes or longer and then rinse that out really well and then you can actually add in to your neutralizing shampoo an eighth of Olaplex which is about that much. Next one we have coming from Archer. If hair has metallic dye in it, does Olaplex still work? Yes, Olaplex will still work if there are metallic metallics in the hair, hard mineral, hard minerals, uh, chlorine, copper, anything like that. But what you have to keep in mind, it doesn't really have anything to do with Olaplex. It has to do with the color or lightener that you're using on that specific client. Color and lightener can react with these minerals in the hair, and it's just something you need to be extremely cautious of. You know, in some cases, it's best just to do a hard water treatment or something like that first strip those minerals from the hair and then proceed as normal because no matter what that is going to affect your overall results with or without Olaplex and it's just something we have to be really really aware of. Yes. Bianca, what are the first signs that they have box color in their hair? I... Hey. <laughs> um, you can feel it. A lot of the time you can feel the color buildup when you're consulting with a client and you're just literally touching their hair. It has a different texture. You yes, know what I'm talking about? Yes, it's like definitely. not a coarse feeling but a very like... There's a lot like of a ammonia yeah, in those. Yeah. Exactly. In, in those box colors, so and then when you're lifting, a huge difference. Yeah, yes. and when you're lifting, that's when the truth comes they're out. They're like, oh, well, you know, actually I did it, like, but it was like two years ago, but their hair is down to their belly button, so you're like, well, yes. thanks for telling me now. <clears throat> um, and you'll definitely see when you're lifting, it's going to lift differently than if it was a professional hair color or if it, there was no color to begin with. It's very uh, red, very, very warm. Very red, it's a, like a brick color, it's hard to get past it, it's hard to break past it. The texture when you're lifting it, it's also different than the texture when you lift uh, a professional hair color line out of the hair. It's a, it's a different, it's like a rougher texture. Yes. And if you ever, you know, um, find that the foils are getting puffy when you are lifting mm -hmm. with box color, rinse right away. This is, you know, the biggest sign of a negative reaction between the bleach developer and the minerals of the metallic dyes and all that. So definitely rinse right away and you gotta educate your client. You know, this has now turned into a color correction because you yeah. have box color. This is a whole yeah, other story. This is not highlights anymore. Lifting, yeah, lifting per professional color is easy, but lifting, you know, home box color is, is completely different. So you do need to educate your clients because you will be able to lighten them, but it will take baby steps. Right? Definitely. It's going to take you uh, more sessions, probably more Olaplex. And, lots, of, uh, lots of the Olaplex number three. Definitely. Um, and I would patience. Say, lots of yes, patience. Yes, because you're not going to get them the lightness that you want. And yeah, you can push the hair just like any time. You can push the hair and push it and push it and push it. And it'll get blonde, most likely, but it's going to snap off because the inside of your hair is what's being affected by the bleach and the chemicals. And you can only give so much of the inside of your hair before there's nothing left to give. Yes. Um, DB so. International Hair. Does Olaplex work well with keratin treatments? Keratin treatments. So yes, of course. Olaplex works very well in every single service that you do in the salon. With keratin treatments, you are kind of, you know, putting a product onto the hair and then using heat to kind of seal the deal and laminate it in. So okay. you want to begin with an Olaplex treatment first. You want to treat the bonds in the hair first before you go ahead and laminate the hair. So again, do an Olaplex treatment. The number one diluted with water in a non-spraying applicator bottle at the shampoo bowl, followed by the number two. Layered over on, the top. Layered over the top, kind of sandwich that one in. Okay. Um, leave that on for a minimum of 10 minutes and then shampoo and condition. And no. Do not condition. Do not, not condition. Clarify, clarify shampoo. Yes. yes. 
clarify, clarify, clarify shampoo and make sure they're... Just like you would. Yes, just like you would a normal keratin. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also want... And then proceed with your keratin treatment. And clarify, I mean, some keratins are clarify once. Some are up to seven times. So just follow the directions per your keratin treatment and proceed just like normal. Yeah, yes. you don't need to change on the, that. On the flip side of that, though, if you're going to do an Olaplex treatment after or use the number three afterward, it's best to wait until that barrier starts to dissipate a bit because that's acting, if this is the hair, that's acting like a wall on it. You need to wait until this goes away so the Olaplex can work and be effective. Yes, and I want to touch up really, really quick on extensions. Um, yes. Olaplex works great on extensions, yeah. but extensions, you don't know where they have been. Um, you know, they're like manufactured in a warehouse somewhere <laughs> and it's like they all have to be one color. So in order to get all of these extensions to one color, they have to treat these extensions, they have to lift it, they have to deposit color. You never know exactly what type of dyes they're putting in there. Sometimes textile dyes even. Yes, like furniture dyes and all that. So um, when you are working with extensions, always be careful with them. If they are 100% human hair, Olaplex will help, of course. Um, but when you are rinsing, I'm always super gentle with extensions. Yeah. And when you are applying the extensions, Make sure to keep the number two off the root. You don't want to use anything with a cream additive. So definitely keep the number two off the root. So that and those bonds just, don't slip. Yes, use it on the mid shaft to the ends. Um, and then apply the extensions as normal. And um, yeah, yeah, so. If they're out and you're about to apply them, you can always do a full Olaplex treatment roots to ends on those extensions. Just make sure before you reapply those though, you clarify really, really well because as everyone said, as with any cream form, that does run the possibility of them slipping. So, you know, just get any type of, of cream off the hair and then proceed as normal. Yes, the number one diluted with water can be used roots to ends because mm -hmm. there isn't any kind of um, cream additive in there. Yep. So, any, any last minute tips? Um, I think definitely, I mean, Use Olaplex as preferred, it's a preference, so adjust it according to how you like it, not just because it says this much and this much, and this much. It's definitely a personal preference, so use it according to how you want. Yes, and um, we have a new social media tool, Periscope. It's yeah. awesome. Definitely, definitely, definitely follow us on Periscope. We're going to do live videos. Yeah. Um, Pinterest. All the time. Yeah. Pinterest is And we get one. live feeds, so you can comment and ask us questions so we can uh, discuss with you through our live feeds. Yes, so add yourself onto Periscope, Olaplex. Twitter. Twitter. Twitter, of course. Tweet. We can't forget our, our oldies but goodies. Um, add your salon to the salon locator, download our app, watch all our videos. Instagram, on, um, obviously, everyone's webinar. favorite. Yes. Instagram, Olaplex users group on Facebook. Yes, that's a charmer right there. That's a Any, pretty good one. If you have a question, <laughs> post it, and you'll, you know, you'll get some exciting answers with people that have been using Olaplex for a very long time. And really exciting, these two are going to be going to Dubai Yay. in about a week. Um, to help with the launch out there. So, you know, let's just say you're watching this from Dubai right now. Definitely come yes, see Yes, we're them. going to Periscope from Dubai. Definitely. So definitely um, add us on there. We will be at, uh, Slim and I will be at Sydney Expo in Australia as well. So if you're down there, definitely come by the booth and see us. Um, you know, we're going to be at a lot more shows, both domestically and internationally this year. So we'd love to meet all of you. Come by the booth, say hi, you know, ask questions. You know, this is all because of you. <laughs> um, and it's been, it's a fun ride so far, but it's going to get so much better. Yes. Oh, and on the last note, we do have other products coming out. That's all I'm going to say for now, but, um, they're going to be good. The future is good guys. <laughs> so, um, thank you for all the support. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys. We'll, uh, see you soon. Bye.